my YouTube channel. So today I'm here to talk to you about a post that I recently published on Instagram about me documenting my journey. I wasn't quite sure how I was going to document the journey and actually what the journey is because I just don't know how best to kind of do it. I was thinking, should I do it as a vlog? Should I? I mean, I don't really want to get into vlogging per se, so it's kind of hard to document the journey as I actually go along. But then I don't know how much people are enjoying just watching me sit and talk at the camera, which is my phone. So I think for now I'm going to stick with the talk sitting down, talking videos, because it's just much easier for me with Allegra and, you know, just kind of juggling things at the moment. And also because it, I don't really need to show you day to day what I'm doing. Like, I'm sure nobody's even interested in that at this point because nobody really even knows me yet. So for now, I just think talking to you guys is the easiest way to go forward. So basically, where my journey starts is obviously resigning from my job after having my daughter. And now she's one years old and I am now at the end of maternity leave. I mean, no, maternity leave is over now officially. Um, so that's kind of the journey and the journey will be from now maternity leave being over, me being um, conventionally and technically unemployed and kind of my journey to where I end up. And the point is I'm not just trying to end up in a nine to five job. I kind of really want to harness all of this energy and motivation and passion that I've discovered over my maternity leave to do something amazing that really fits in line with, I suppose, what Gary V would call uh, my personal brand. So, you know, something to do with, you know, empowerment and womanhood and motherhood and um, independence and self-employment and all these kind of things that are really important to me. So at the moment, while I am at the end of my maternity leave and trying to find some form of steady income, so to speak, I am killing it on eBay. Like I'm literally on eBay every single day. I'm selling hard. Um, it's kind of like my my stream of income at the moment. And obviously with that comes a lot of kind of skills. I've learned loads about listings, about how to research products, how to find out how, how much to sell products for, um, pricings, best time to list, all this kind of stuff. So it's, you know, although it's literally just selling things on eBay, it has kind of helped to inspire a more kind of business acumen in myself because I'm obviously a lot more kind of creative than I am business minded. However, um, this has been something that I've kind of been toying with throughout my maternity leave. I was thinking about launching a business that would manage the wardrobes of people that change their um, collection seasonally, so to speak. So every spring, summer, every autumn, winter, you know, these people clear out their wardrobes and probably they're so like time poor that they just get rid of it as opposed to maybe being able to sell stuff on, knowing what to keep, what to just go to charity because it's not worth much. And so I kind of wanted to get involved in advising people on managing their wardrobes and also being able to sell on the stuff that is profitable that they can make money from um, and and be able to take a cut from that sale and you know just be, become an expert on online sales for fashion. Um, so, so that was something that I was considering. So in the meantime, I was like, well, first of all, I've got my own wardrobe. I've got my husband's wardrobe. I've got a wardrobe at my parents' old house. Um, I've got... I've got access to so many wardrobes and so many people that are in fashion that get rid of stuff and whatever that I was like, so let me just start with the people that I know and myself. So for the past month, I would say I have been selling maybe 10 items a week on um, eBay. So that doesn't actually sound like a lot because in theory, I could, I wanted to do 10 items a day. So I wanted to list 10 items a day and sell 10 items a day. However, it hasn't quite worked out like that. Just mostly because of timing and also because a lot of the things that I'm listing don't always sell immediately. So it means that I'm listing them maybe once or twice before they actually sell. So yeah, but so the reason that I am selling on eBay is because until I get a more kind of conventional stream of income, this is my income, this is what I am living off of. And when I was watching Tony Robbins and Gary V recently on one of Arts Gary V's shows, um, they said, Tony Robbins said, it's not about what you do, it's about why you do it. And so, of course, all I'm doing is selling on eBay. And at one point, I felt slightly embarrassed by that. I didn't want to tell people that this is how I'm making my living now. However, on the other hand, I feel so self-empowered and so, like, I started to feel almost like a little mini entrepreneur. I know that everyone throws that word around and I'm not an entrepreneur, but I am making money for myself in my own time. I'm completely in control of when I wake up, when I work. I work less hours. 
I obviously make less money than I did when I was um, employed, you know, in the corporate sense of the word. However, I'm in control. It's completely my thing. So I just wanted to show you guys maybe a few things that I am selling or that has sold this week. So I, I, what I'm, my experience of eBay is so far is that luxury is really hard to sell because, you know, with luxury, there comes a bit of a story about the item. You love it. You bought it when you was in Italy. You got, you know, it reminds you of something and it's treasured and all this kind of stuff. And it was your first luxury handbag and all that rubbish. But nobody else cares about that story. Although some people do love vintage and they appreciate it, a lot of people are buying secondhand stuff or vintage stuff on eBay because they don't want to pay the full whack for it. So they're not really caring that, you know, you're pricing it at £200 more than actually what it's going for because it's treasured to you. That is not how it works on eBay. So what I find is selling things that are from like Zara, Topshop, ASOS, these things, they sell. When you think you might buy a night for 40, 50 quid and you sell it for 10, 15 pounds. I mean, that is amazing. And even better is when you can buy things from Zara and sell them on eBay for even more than you paid for it. And that does happen because obviously Zara is quite a fast fashion brand. Things sell out quickly. People don't always get their hands on the things that they want in time. So then you're able to sell these things just because they're rare, they're scarce, people can't find them. So anyway, let me stop going on about all my tactics and let me just tell you what I've sold this week. And um, yeah, let's go through it. So these are a pair of mango jeans. I mean, I will um, limp roll these before I, I send I send them off. These have sold this week and they sold for, I think these sold for four pounds, which is not much. Um, and they are brand new. They've still got the tags on them. Um, you know, they are like a slim fit jean, which is why I'm selling them. I don't really wear this kind of cut jean. Um, but somebody else wanted them. So those have sold this week. These pair of, uh, these are a pair of Calvin Klein Dirty Denim men's jeans. Uh, these are obviously my husband's. I hate these jeans so much. I'm so glad that he's finally decided to sell them because they are just so old-fashioned. I don't know why anyone would still wear a dirty denim wash, but somebody out there bought them. Maybe they want them for, you know, just running around or, you know, I don't know what people would wear these jeans for because I hate them. But, like, you have to understand that one man's trash is another man's treasure. So let me not dog it too much because obviously someone has bought these. Thank you very much. So this is a Fendi um, clutch, well it can be a clutch or a crossbody bag. This is vintage, this is amazing. It's like in perfectly good condition. I don't think it's ever really been carried much. This was my mother-in-law's bag. She kindly gave it to me. I was at first like, oh my God, I actually don't wanna sell this. I wanna keep it for myself. But the whole point is right now to declutter, to make money um, and also to, you know, to sell. So. So I didn't take this to keep, I took it to sell. So, so this is a really nice Fendi bag, it's in really good condition and this is going to a lovely lady who collects um, bags throughout the year from eBay, like luxury bags throughout the year. She's got three daughters and so when it comes to Christmases, um, Christmas and birthdays, she's able to have like really nice gifts that are super cheap. This sold for £75 and Fendi, vintage Fendi on eBay generally goes for around that kind of price. At first I priced it at... Um, I'm going to say like £90 or something like that and it just wasn't selling so sometimes you just got to go with you know the market so this I sold for £75 really nice bag amazing bargain to that lady and then this is just you know the standard puff shoulder blazer in Zara Zara have been selling these for god knows how long now um, this is the gold button one I've bought this jacket twice because I wore it out once um, and I took my jacket off and I put it in a bag and somebody stole it so I bought it again now this jacket does not fit me which is super annoying so this has sold for I think 16 pounds and I paid 60 pounds for it so you know it's sitting in my wardrobe doing nothing so that's fine and um, so that's everything that I've sold and um, anyway so this is how I'm making my money at the moment but however the plan is because obviously I'm a mum I live in a two-bedroom flat um, I would love to have another baby, but we cannot afford to have another baby in this tiny little flat. I do need to get a, a, a permanent position in a company and a regular form of income. Um, and I want to get a bigger house. I need that stability. I need the lender to obviously be able to see that, no, I'm making at least this amount of money every month. And then obviously my eBay money will come on top of that. So the plan is to get a part-time job 
that is really um, in line with everything that I do so I don't feel like I'm going to work but it's an extension of who I am and what I'm loving and how I'm kind of working at the moment so that is the plan this week I had an interview um, and it was a part-time role for a very lovely company and if I get it I will tell you about it if I don't get it I might tell you about it anyway and just tell you so you can kind of understand what kind of roles I'm looking for but it was a part-time job in a family-run company and it was something that really suited me. It seemed like everybody in the company had children, so I really liked that idea as well. It was a very small company, it was only 12 people. It was only 12 people in the company. Sorry, I just had to check my battery because, um, because it's low as usual. And also I'm about to head out, so I'm massively in a rush. So it was 12 people in the company, most of them had children, and it just, it was local, so it was something I could get in my car and drive to. It was, actually closer to Allegra's nursery than what I live so if I had to drop her to nursery in the mornings then drive to work it would have been ugh, like perfection uh, there's parking everywhere it was just perfect so I'm waiting to hear if I got through to the second stage I will keep you updated with that I will keep you updated with the job hunt that I'm on right now I'm finding the market is obviously always in favour of permanent full-time work um, you know, not to knock any recruitment agents at all, but the recruitment agents are pissing me off like hell. I have so many people call me and be like, oh, so I found your CV online. What is it that you're looking for? And I'm like, no, don't ask me what I'm looking for. Do you have a job first? Because I don't have time to sit on the phone and tell you about, yes, I want to work in content. I want to do this. I want to do that. If you say, okay, we'll put you on our books or we'll update our records. You're not updating your records because you don't even have me on your record and I never hear anything from them. So I, you know, I hate the fact that some of these recruitment agents that you know, the ones that just phone up for the numbers or because they just have to do it because their boss said, can you call this person today, blah, blah, blah. I hate being people, I hate that they are the gatekeepers of the jobs out there. I hate having to deal with those kind of recruitment agents. I'm not saying that I hate all recruitment agents, I'm just saying that kind. So that is my rant over. Anyway, so next week I will update you on the journey. I will let you know what I sold. I will let you know how the job market is going, how I'm finding things. Um, and yeah. Thanks for watching this video guys, thanks for taking part in my journey, I hope that any new mums out there, mums that maternity leave is about to be over and they don't want to go back to the conventional sense of work, I hope that you've found this useful, if you have any questions please feel free to direct message me, I am totally down for kind of like helping out and you know, I mean not that I'm like an expert at all, but just what I've learned in this little short time, I'm quite happy to impart this knowledge on any other mums or anyone just trying to go it alone and do something different. Um, so yeah, so just holler at me if you would like to. Let me know if you like this video, if you would like to see more like this. Um, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And yes, I will look forward to seeing you in my next video, which will be the next entry of my journey. Ideally, I will publish that next week. I'd like to do this weekly, so I'm going to try and do this weekly. Um, so yeah, so hopefully I will see you in the next one. Bye.